How's everybody doing? I really don't need the microphone, but I, I'll, I'll go with it anyway. But uh, just to let everybody know, um, uh, excuse my screen here. This is a, just a little nonsense right here. But I want to welcome everybody. First and foremost, thank you for coming out to WordCamp. You know, Phoenix rocks as usual. Um, and the community has been really, really, really amazing. Um, so we're going to begin with understanding a little bit about what imposter syndrome actually is. And uh, having to give you a little bit of foresight about that. I'm going to give you a little spiel kind of give you a little bit of notes and details, and then from there, we're gonna go in and we're gonna have a little Q&A and kind of divide up, you know what I mean, so we can have a better understanding of what imposter syndrome is from different perspectives. So I'm, I came into this, I'm, I'm a graduate of the Full Stack Web Development Program here in the first cohort here at Galvanized Phoenix. So I'm July of uh, 28th of last year, I was, I was freshly graduated. So I've only been a dev for about a year and a half, roughly. So with that in mind, I'm really new to this, and I have felt imposter syndrome firsthand. Feeling like you, you, don't, you don't belong, feeling like you're not qualified, everybody's smarter than you, understanding that, you know, feeling like you're, you know, you're totally lost, you don't have a clue of what you're doing, and this translates across more than one area. So it's in, by a show of hands, who has ever felt that way? Be honest, let's show of hands. We all have, right? Right? That, that's, that's normal. So to be a little anxious, to be a little nervous, you know, it, it's normal. It's a normal feeling. It's a normal human reaction. But when that feeling becomes more than that, where no matter what happens, you never feel like you're good enough. When you feel like you're never going to make it, no matter how much you try, everybody is in the, in the room is smarter than you. And you know what? You feel like a phony. You feel like a fraud. And you really feel like you don't belong. And you just are just praying that you don't get exposed. It's not true. It's a myth. It's just all in your head. But we all feel that way from some time to another. And I began with being from in the, in, on the software development end, you know, full stack, you know, JavaScript, Angular, React, you know, that whole world. Um, I would always hear uh, in meetups that these moans and groans about WordPress. And I never understood why. And it probably was a newbie in me because I didn't, I didn't know. Maybe I, you know, I wasn't knowledgeable at the time. And, I, it made me dig deeper. Why are all the moans and groans from the from the these guys that are doing all this great, you know, multi-child component, you know, you know, stacked inside of each other, layered stuff, you know what I mean? It, it uh, elements, and I came to find out, you know what? We're no different. We're all the same. And so it speaks volumes to the community as a whole that things are changing. Um, diversity, of course, has always been brought up as an issue within the the tech community, and there are ways to be able to overcome that, but it starts a lot of times with the imposter syndrome. Feeling like, you know, because that you don't belong. Feeling like that based on the fact that you are a woman, a person of color, your particular, you know, background. Maybe, you know, you, you maybe you started later on in life like I did, you know, and, and, and for other reasons that you don't feel like you fit in. You don't feel like you don't belong. And, and that, that's where we're trying to get, that, get past that and get you all to be able to use some tools to be able to get past that. So with that in mind, we want to make sure that when we do, we're talking about imposter syndrome, that we know exactly who we're dealing with. So I would just brought this up because you know what? Everybody here is a dev rock star, and you don't know it, <laughs> right? We are. You know, um, it's funny, and, and it's, I'm going to bring the conversation up because he's actually in the room right now, uh, my partner right here. He's, um, we had a conversation, and we were just talking shop. And he said this conversation, he's like, hey, man, you know, um, I, just, I really want to be, you know, more, you know, I want to, you know, get my skills set up to where you are. And I'm like, you're already there. We were talking shop. We were talking complicated shop talk that the average person would not understand. <laughs> right? And so I'm like, there's no difference. So I came to realize that, you know, whether I'm using a framework, a library, uh, um, I'm using a graphic user interface, a GUI, whether I'm you know, cutting and pasting, dragging and dropping, whether I'm typing in two or three lines from uh, in the command line, you know, it's all the same. We are all the same. We're all devs. And so I want everybody to understand that you need to rise to the occasion and understand and empower yourself that you are a dev rock star and you really don't know it. And you know what? Other people don't know it either. So a lot of this deals with um, the concept of, has everybody heard fake it till you make it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's normal. It's a normal reality. And 
sometimes you have to do that. You know what I mean? Not saying that you're, you've given out a false impression or you're leading people on and leading people astray. Sometimes you don't realize the power and magnitude within yourselves. And I want to tell you here and now that you guys have the power and ability to create awesome and amazing things through WordPress. But continue to strive to grow, develop your skill set even more, and trust me, as the, the technology is progressing at such a rapid rate, as we all know, that you, got, you have to learn more. I mean, literally, you're learning something consistently that you just, it's just going to be a part of the plan. Um, actually, stepping on my own made me realize that I needed to do something different. Because after I graduated, I had a problem. I had applied to many jobs, and I was receiving a lots and lots of attention. I mean, like, constantly, even before graduation. And so this is my big reveal. It was something that was that is from my past that was kind of holding me back. And it was always in the back of my mind that I, it was there and that I couldn't do it and that I couldn't really make anything of it. And I always held it inside and I really didn't want to tell a lot of people and I was very discreet about who I told about my situation. And I had to be honest and do a reality check with certain people, especially um, the staff here at Galvanize. And they were aware of it, and they were very receptive to it. They understood my situation. But I was concerned that I wasn't going to be able to make it. And it actually you know, kind of worked its way into, and it's still a work in progress. Life is still a work in progress. So I never give up. And one of the tools that I'm going to teach you now is that um, famous tenor play players, you may not realize it or not, when they go to take their time on the bench, some of them actually have note cards to themselves. And their affirmations to reiterate in their head over and over again that they're still there, they're good, they're in the game. They're not, they, they might be down, you know, like, like, like five love, but they're, they're still in the game to get back in there. You're a champion, you got the heart of a champion in the win. And that's the same level of encouragement that I would uh, spread to you guys, in spite of anybody's situation, despite of anybody's demographic, despite of being a, a, a considered a product of your environment, you guys are so amazing. And just embracing that, you know what I mean? Take that in, take that moment and get that clear eye and say, you know what? I know I feel nervous right now and I'm a little anxious, but I'm really there. I'm in the middle of it. When some people around you may not realize it, that you need to talk to them. That's another thing that we go into is like communication. It's extremely important. Talk to others in this community. We just saw all the hands, a sea of hands just now, right? So we all feel the same way. When you're really feeling down and you're really not feeling like things are not going your way, that's the time to reach out to someone. I really want people to make sure that they today at some point go on Twitter and hashtag out, you know what I mean, that if, you're, if you feel like you're in need to talk to somebody and you're feeling like you're an imposter, please reach out. I'm going to have them do that. Your time's almost up. Gotcha. <laughs> so my big reveal is this. I'm a formerly incarcerated person. I served seven and a half years on an eight and a half year sentence in the Arizona Department of Corrections. I decided that, you know what, I was not going to be a product of my environment. I was not going to let that control me. And I wasn't a sum of all that. I was going to live up to my, to my potential, and I was going to be the best man that I could be. And so even when things have not necessarily gone my way, and there's been stumbling blocks, and you know, I, I've been knocked flat down on my face, you know, being a part of that environment and being told no, you know, growing up in that sense, it kind of molded me for this. So this is also a part of uh, imposter syndrome. Me standing before you, exposing what my flaws and weaknesses are, I'm taking that tool and using it to my benefit so that I can spread my message of how important it is to make sure that you affirm yourself and that you are valid and that you do exist. And with that, I'm gonna pass it over to my partner. Okay, thank you, Deshaun. We're both gonna answer questions for you, but we had an agreement I was gonna stand up and let him know and his time was almost up and then I realized I'm not really standing right now, so. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I actually not only was going to have you raise hands, but I had a thought that it would be fun for you to take just a minute and find somebody you don't know and share with someone near you. We're not going to take a long time because otherwise I don't get to talk. Um, but some story of how you felt like you were an imposter. So go ahead and do that right now just for a minute or two.
be sure you both get a chance to talk, so switch up. Okay, we're going to wrap it up now. Can we get your attention back up front, please? Well, you can hear me. I'm not sure this thing's... One more time. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Deshaun's got the whistle. Oh, that wasn't me. That wasn't oh, me. Oh, <laughs> no. Thank you. I, I can't whistle. That, that's another thing. That's a, <laughs> another thing. I can't whistle at all. Like, nothing at all. I can't even do it. Like, nothing. I've thank tried. you all for playing along and doing that. Um... I think when uh, Carol said we each had a very different story, I want to share a little bit of my story. And then what I hope to do is also share with you some things to do about having imposter syndrome. And I may have to refer to my phone for that list. But um, <laughs> when Deshaun said that we're all developers, I kind of feel like I'm an imposter because I don't write code. And I think developer means you write code, right? So I'm already like, I haven't been to school. I haven't learned all the stuff that Deshaun's learned. I'm a 68-year-old woman, and um, if I had been born a lot later, I might have been a dev. But I uh, was a graphic designer. I um, was not a trained graphic designer. In fact, most of you probably aren't old enough to remember desktop publishing when uh, the, some of you are nodding. That's good. Uh, when they first came out with uh, PageMaker, I taught myself PageMaker and did a little four-page newsletter with black holes for the photos, and the two fonts were Times and Helvetica. So that's how far back I go. And that was on a PC, not a Mac, I just have to say. Um, <laughs> and along the way, I've evolved. So I, I took a, a half-day workshop in Dreamweaver, and I started doing websites in Dreamweaver. And then my clients started wanting blogs. And I figured out a very bizarre way of taking um, a page in HTML and putting, you know, here and copying up to here and making it the header and after here and making it the footer. And then I had a I had a, a blog that matched the HTML website I designed for my clients. So that's how I've evolved into using WordPress. And then I took a half day free workshop from somebody. I live in Seattle, uh, who was teaching kind of WordPress 101, but I got enough in a three-hour free workshop that I went home and I started doing this thing called designing WordPress. And it's like, well, but I'm a designer and I don't really want to use themes because then I don't get to be creative, right? But I don't really want to learn how to code either. And <laughs> so I discovered a thing called um, uh, visual frameworks and I work first in Headway and then in PageMaker, or uh, excuse me, in PageLines. And now I work in Divi. Um, but the, the relevance is that I feel like I live in with my one foot in the design world and one foot in the coding world because I really don't code. And I often feel imposter syndrome because the bottom line is I have to build my network. And, and that was something Deshaun said when you know talking to people. The WordPress community is so fabulous. And w it's one of the things we have in common is that we're both actively involved in our communities. Um, me in Seattle and Deshaun here. And by going to meetups and learning people, uh, learning who people are and what their skills are, you find people that can kind of fill in where you might not be quite as good. So one of the notes I had, I did all this research. I mean, like, I could do a two-hour talk on imposter syndrome, but you all have Google, and you can look up and read. There's a bazillion articles about this whole thing. One of the quotes that really stayed with me was from Rachel Andrew, who's a, a woman who writes, um, she created CSS Grid. She talks about it. We're actually bringing her to Seattle to speak the end of March. And um, she's from the UK. And she says that, and, and Carol alluded to this with the social media thing, you know. We um, are comparing our kind of cutting room floor with everybody else's sizzle reel, you know. And that's not reality. And in the tech world, we all know that we have to know so much more than any one human being can know, which is why you need the community. You need to meet people that you can team up with, you can ask questions of, you can get help with. You get on Slack. They have a really active Slack here. They have a lot of meetups here in, in the uh, Phoenix area. So if you're not already, so how many of you are already like plugged into the, the local community for WordPress? See, not so many. How many of you are here at WordCamp for the very first time? 
Oh, welcome. Oh, that's what it is. Okay, that's so what wait, it is. wait, leave your hands up. Leave, leave your hands up. up. Leave your hands up. I want those of yes. you who have been before, yeah, not only to applaud them, but I want you to make a point of going and finding these people and welcoming them and getting to know them because that helps you not be an imposter. It helps you be part of a community, right? So I do have a list. How's my time? <laughs> Okay, I've got a little list I, from one of those articles I looked up, and it says, what can you do? And it says, focus on the value you bring, not on attaining perfection. So that's one of the things. I am a perfectionist. I have been all my life. And I, when people say to me, uh, you know, like I'm, I'm starting a client project. I work alone. I'm a freelancer. And, um, and I kind of do soup to nuts for my clients. And when I start a job with a client, I start looking for inspiration for, you know, what's this going to look like? And I get so intimidated comparing, comparing mind is really our enemy, comparing what I do, which I, I describe as very utilitarian, uh, to the beautiful stuff that's out there. Like, I can't do that. Yeah, I'm a designer, but I'm not a trained designer. I, people are going to find out that I'm really not as good as I think I am or I want to think I am. So that, that's a piece of it. Um, own your successes. You really didn't get successful by luck. And that's what people with imposter syndrome think. They think it's just luck. They, they don't own that they're successful. And, and, and I already said this, but cease comparisons. They're, they're an act of violence against yourself, this article says. Um, and hold firm to your ambition. It says, risk outright exposure, which is what Deshaun just did, right? Um, there's a woman named Margie Worrell. She wrote a book called Stop Playing Safe, and this quote is from her. While playing safe removes the immediate risk of exposure, it opens up the greater risk of never knowing just how capable, deserving, and more than worthy you actually are. So that's an important message. Um, I'm just looking to see if I left anything important out before I move on. Can I interject for a second while you Please, leave? yeah. Uh, definitely. Um, so a couple things I want to say that how to beat imposter syndrome. And yeah. so the first one is, we said mentioned before, accept it and embrace it. The next one is, remember, you are not alone. So I always go to Michael Jackson, you are not alone. <laughs> um, talk to others in tech, which we just, we just recommended. Um, if you doubt yourself, talk to your colleagues and get to get a different perspective. Reassure yourself, motivate yourself, and be a pioneer. When I mean be a pioneer, as uh, you know, members of underrepresented communities in tech and just in general, you know, what I mean, we are vulnerable to fears of inadequacy. So self-doubt is again normal and unhealthy, and we just how do we deal with it? Is we go about making sure that we reach out to each other because that's what this is about. Overall, tech this is about community. It's big on community. So make sure you keep that in mind. So thank you. So we just got the 10 minute warning, which means we want to start our Q&A now. And um, we'll take from all parts of the room and I will repeat questions that I can hear. So go ahead. Can you repeat that question? <laughs> I should have given you the mic. Uh, he's, I think he's referring more to like you've done you've done something done done this project and you've worked on it and you know you put your heart and soul into it and literally you're you're pretty much spent and like that, that just that sense of completion you know what I mean and just like you know what the world I'm done with it and now yeah. it's done and just move on you know just kind of am I, am I kind of paraphrasing correctly? Yeah. Then you go to the next one so so you don't have really a time to celebrate you know per se you just kind of like. On to the next one. They, my uh, my lead instructor used to tell, tell us all the time, and, um, and, he, and I'm not going to put him on the spot. Um, he said, um, we go from one era to the next. Oh. So that's what we do. Every day, all day, we go from one era to the next. We learn how to document it, find the research on it, and go from one to the next. Interesting. Did that address it for you? Good. OK. Somebody on the side? Yeah. You're in, a, you're in the wrong place. Right, you've got to, she said you've got to love change or this is the wrong industry for you. How about over on this side? Oh, where? Right here, this one. Yes, sir.
I totally agree. I, I experienced that firsthand. I was I was in a sea of just like I seventy percent of the conversation I didn't understand, but I stayed anyway and I Googled. I wrote down every single word that I didn't know, and I went home and I Googled it. And then I could find an answer. I would Google something else, and then I learned how to advance Google search. Google and I just is your kept friend. Going. And I, I never gave up. So yeah, that, that's that's a part of it. You know what I mean? Sometimes that high level conversation, don't be discouraged by it because there are other people in the room that really don't know all that high level information. Just a select few. So don't be dissuaded by it. Come back again and again because the more that you're exposed to it, the more that you're immersed in it, the more you'll, you'll grasp it. Let's get another one over here. <laughs> Given that everybody's laughing, I think you can hear him, but I think for the recording, we're supposed to try and repeat you. Okay, did everybody hear yeah. me? Should I say it? Yeah, say again? it again. Okay, so my question is, how do you on a personal level address what I refer to as the paradox of information or knowledge, which means that the more you learn, the more you realize you don't know anything. But is there a certain point that you feel, okay, I've turned the corner where I have a certain level of proficiency in this or that? I'm going to answer that for you. For me, it was defining my own niche, like getting clear who my market was, that I'm not for everybody. You know, I'm not going to work for big corporations. I'm not going to work for... And, and by defining my niche, I'm kind of in my comfort zone, and th that's dangerous too. You know, you, you do want to stretch yourself, and um, yet you don't want to try and do be all things to all people. It's actually a marketing lesson is to get clear, you know, what is your value proposition and your, what you have to offer. So I, I kind of, I think I've addressed it that way. I don't... I, I'm comfortable because of the networking I've done in the community that when I don't know how to do something, I know who to contact to get help with something. Even though I work mostly alone, I don't have a, a partner like you two are partners, I, I work in isolation a lot, which is why I started a monthly meetup for f WordPress freelancers in Seattle. We've been doing that for a year, and when people talk to me there about um, how they they um, onboard people or you know do do this or do that how they track their time i don't track my time i get very i start i know it's like people go oh my god how do you do your business you don't track your time but i don't track my time and i've gotten comfortable over time that my way works for me it may not be right for anybody else but i i stopped the comparing mind problem and just found my own way. And that takes time. I mean, I've been at this a long time. I started doing this before half of the people in the room were born, okay? So <laughs> there are some advantages to being old. I, I, I would chime in and say that, you know, um, we, we, were, um, we were exposed to and in, in, in galvanized in the program here. We were, we in the last quarter, because it's four quarters, we did unfamiliar environments. And I always bring this up because literally the whole entire time of the six month program, I was lost. I didn't know anything. I was at the butt. Literally, I was I was drowning the whole entire time. Could not see the see the light of water at above me. Right. So where the light actually happened was about three or four weeks prior to graduation. They kept doing us this thing called unfamiliar environment. So literally every day we go in a GitHub, we would have a repo waiting for us, and it'd be a different programming language: Python, Ruby on Rails. You know, like every single day it'd be something different, and we didn't know the language. We had no clue, but we started to see familiar patterns things that we've seen before over and over again, like that kind of looks something like familiar. And so that's when the light bulb actually finally came on for me, you know, and so you can't know all the knowledge. It is impossible. There's, it's, too, it's too much. But if you know, what you know what you're good at, understand your strengths, define your strengths, yep. be able to identify your weaknesses, and be able to minimize exposing those, but at the same time still being, you know, true to yourself, then I think that's, that's, you, you'll always be able to do, this, do so. We've got two questions, one in the back, and then these are our last two because we're almost out of time. Go ahead in the back first. Uh. Yeah, give him the mic. <laughs> Thank you, sir. 
So um, what students, you know, any of you who all are teachers know, you learn more from your students sometimes than your students learn from you. I've been programming for 20 years. I started probably around the time that you started, back in the day when Dreamweaver was pretty much the bee's knees. <laughs> um, now Dreamweaver is like, I, I still have it on my computer, but I never use it. Um, but what I want to say, though, what I learned from Deshaun was that as far as the, the imposter syndrome goes, really what you have to do, the whole ecosystem, and to echo you know, part of your question about well, how, do you, how do you survive if it's always changing, it's always growing, it's almost like the development world is this big ocean. And there's, as you know, the ocean is just almost as infinite as outer space. So there will, you'll never be able to swim that whole ocean, but if you stay in the water, long enough, you're going to master that lagoon or bay or gulf that you're in. And you won't master it, but you'll, you'll at least have a familiarity because you've been in the water. You know where the dock is. You know where these fish swim. You know, And after a while, it gets easier so you can swim in other territories because you've just been in the water. And what Deshaun taught me really is just you just have to stay in it. It's his level of persistence you know, and this dogged determination that's really what makes you win in this environment. So really, for those of you, there are probably people in here who've been programming 20 years like me. Other people, two, three years, five years, it doesn't matter. If you pick a stack, so your, the PHP stack, it still has a lot of juice in PHP. If you might pick Ruby or whatever, JavaScript, just staying in that stack long enough, you will find that eventually it does get easier because the stuff, the new frameworks will always be coming out, but it's always a variation on something that you did before. So I guess that's my contribution. Deshaun is an ultimate teacher of that. So, um, you know, that's been my experience. Yay. So we just got the one minute warning and there was one Thank hand you, up over against the wall, yep. That's such a great message Definitely. to end on. I, we have an expression, um, givers get. The, it, being generous yes. and giving. Giving is, is powerful. It pays back twofold, you know? I'm, I'm a firm believer in the power of redemption, you know, and I always say that all, that's, that's my, my speaking piece. And we, this community is so embracing as a whole. If you have a question, say something. Somebody's going to help you. They, they, it's not cutthroat. This is not a cutthroat industry. People are going to champion your cause if you just say help, you say you need help. And that's no matter where you go. You know what I mean? If you have a voice, speak your voice, speak your mind, you know, be, and, and say that you need help. Because guess what? That's how we go on. I, didn't, thought, I thought I knew nothing. And then all of a sudden, I went around people that were newer than me, and all of a sudden, they thought I was a sage. They thought I was a Jedi. And I'm like, you, you talking about me, right? The, the same guy, right? And so, so that's part to, of it. So we need to wrap up. But we will be over at the happiness bar to answer any other questions if you'd like. And the Happiness Bar in general is a great place to get questions answered, not just from the speakers, but there's people there to help you with any problem you, you are having that has to do with WordPress. So thank you all for being here. All right, you guys, be rock stars. Make sure you're rock stars. Believe it and feel it. Thank you for coming. We really appreciate it.